Short, Mid, and Long-Term Impact of COVID-19 on Associations, updated March 20th, 2020. Hi, my name is Sharon Rice, and I'm the Managing Director for Business Strategy of .orgsource. On March 17th, we brought together 10 CEOs of associations to talk about the short, mid, and long-term impact of COVID-19 on their members and their operations. This presentation is a result of that discussion. In 2008, I was working in an executive position for APEX, which is now known as the Association for Supply Chain Management. I learned a lot navigating that difficult time by observing really good leadership. And what I learned was that in difficult times, people want to know where they are, how they got there, and where they're going to go. An important part of putting together a plan is considering the short, mid, and long-term impact of your situation. This gives us information we need to know to evaluate various scenarios and to essentially come up with a plan to navigate the difficult time. So we brought together 10 association executives to try to forecast or anticipate what the short, mid, and long-term impact of the COVID-19 crisis will be on associations. Before we get started, I need to offer a disclaimer. The short, mid, and long-term impact of the COVID-19 crisis will be very specific to the industry or the profession your association represents. We're providing examples here only to illustrate a process. And while I think this is good information in general, you really do need to think about your specific situation and modify as appropriate. This is the model we created on the 17th, documenting what we believe to be the short-term, mid-term, and long-term impact. And we're defining short-term as one to three months, mid-term as four to 12 months, and long-term right now is greater than 12 months. Specifically, we looked at the impact of the COVID crisis on members and customers, products and services, finances, operations, and governance. So let's start by looking at the impact of the COVID crisis on members and customers. Obviously, unemployment is going to soar in the short term. Social distancing now is restricting our mobility, so we're working from home as much as we possibly can. If you represent a healthcare organization, you can count on your members being overstressed. There's little time or interest available right now in traditional professional development in healthcare organizations. On the other hand, there may be some associations where members are really craving something to do and would be interested in engaging in professional development, but obviously it's going to have to be online. In the midterm, four to 12 months, members are going to adapt to the new reality and their individual productivity and innovation is likely to increase as they become better and better from working at home. Healthcare professionals, however, are likely to still be under stress. And as a part of our conversation, we did hear some executives talk about the belief that we'll start to see professionals, healthcare professionals drop out of the profession and look for other types of work. Over the long term, we're going to end up with a more confident mobile workforce. And I think it's very likely that we'll see an increase in the number of gig workers. I also think we'll see federal protection for gig workers that does not exist right now, such as unemployment insurance and insure other types of insurance benefits. Now let's talk about the impacts on products and services. In the short term, it's easy to anticipate that there's going to be a decline in purchases of most product lines because individuals are simply too busy or too concerned about the economy and their personal finances to buy. Company support for association services is likely to dramatically decline during this period for a lot of different types of associations. As we move into the midterm period, again, four to 12 months, I think we'll see associations pulling back on all but the most relevant products and services. And really investment in new product and service development is going to be generally on hold. 
So associations will focus on their most important product lines and also the product lines that are going to help them rebound most quickly from the recession. And again, investment in new infrastructure probably will be pulling back on. Um, cash is going to be king during this time. And so associations will be very carefully managing what they're spending money on. Over the long term, I think that we're gonna see products and services that are more relevant and certainly more digital. So associations right now that haven't made that digital transformation that do, do not have programs online will be working to get programs online as a coping strategy for COVID-19 and will emerge more sophisticated in terms of offering programs and services remotely. One of the most difficult impacts is going to be financial. Over the short and midterm, so for what we're anticipating will be at least 12 months, there's going to be a very negative impact on top line revenue. Some associations are predicting that possibly they'll see a 25% decrease in top line revenue. Others, especially those that are heavily dependent on their annual meetings or face-to-face -face seminars, could see an even greater impact on their top line revenue. So cash is going to be king, just like in the 2008 recession. Expense reduction is going to have to be a priority. And I think that we're going to see the financial crisis come in waves. So just as it's following the virus or the spread of the virus, we have an intense period we're experiencing right now. It's likely to let up and start to look a little bit sunnier over the summer. But again, as they're predicting, the virus will hit again in the fall. We'll see an impact again on association operations and financial operations in the fall as a number of associations that have fall meetings are not going to be able to hold those meetings as well. Of course, associations that are well-funded, that have good investment or reserve funds are going to fare better than those that don't. And so the long-term impact, financial impact, is that we're gonna end up with fewer associations. We're absolutely going to see associations either go out of business or be merged into other organizations. However, the associations that survive the crisis will once again thrive. And we can look at um, the impact of 9-11 or again, the 2008 recession associations. Many associations came out of those events and were stronger than they were before, just like our economy came back from those events. There's obviously a strong connection between financial operations and association operations overall. And so in the short term, what we're going to see is the potential for staff layoffs. This is going to put more stress on the staff that remain because they're going to be expected to do more with less resource. Initially, we talked about productivity falling and I think that that's going to be true. So there's going to be an adjustment period here as uh, workers become remote. We will be concentrating therefore on essential operations for getting the things that are most urgent and most important done. However, as we move into the midterm, we're going to see staff adjusting to their remote working relationships. And what's interesting is that we have to start planning then for coming out of the recession. So we're gonna to have to uh, put together budgets. Those budgets will be based on planned activities. We're going to have to try to anticipate what the world's going to be like post COVID-19. And so this is, I think, a, a period midterm of some real innovation, the potential for a lot of innovation actually in association operations. And those associations that embrace this can look forward then in the long term to more efficient operations. And so we will come out of this with, I think, some distinct benefit in the way we work and how productively we work. The last area we looked at is governance. So obviously what's happening right now is face-to-face -face board meetings and committee meetings are being canceled this spring and they're being moved online. However, that doesn't mean that communication between the CEO and the board is diminished. In fact, it's just the opposite. There's greater communication as these different branches of leadership are trying to figure out how to navigate the crisis that we're in. In the midterm and probably in the long term, we think that the trust level between the CEO and the board is going to increase as we're trying to work together 
to navigate the crisis and make decisions. We'll know each other better, we'll understand each other and where we're coming from. Hopefully we're listening better. And this will generally increase trust, not only in the CEO, but I think in staff operations as well. The Finance Committee is going to play a pivotal role in the midterm, and that will hold over in the long term as well. So staff really need that Finance Committee to be a partner in making decisions about expense reductions, where to put investments, and certainly how to budget for a rebound. The long-term impact on governments, governance is likely to be in a lighter, more nimble structure. So I think what we'll see is an overall reduction in the number of committees um, because committees that were not vital to navigating the crisis may not be vital to the future of the association. And I also think we'll see a reduction in the number of board members. So an association, let's say, that has 24 board members may learn through this process that it will be easier to navigate um, and decision-making in the future if they have fewer board members. So how can you use this model to benefit your association? Essentially, what we recommend is that you sit down with your staff, look at the model, and make changes based on your specific circumstances. Remember that I said that the model will vary based on the profession or the industry that you represent. It also may vary based on how financially secure your organization is or how diverse your revenue base is. Once you've adapted the model for your association, you're well positioned to engage in scenario planning. And scenario planning is simply a process in which we envision a number of potential futures and develop strategies to navigate those futures. This is something that .org source can help you with. We can facilitate scenario planning. It's also something that you can do on your own. But what I can tell you is you will never be sorry that you have a plan. A plan helps you navigate the future. It makes you alert to different changes in the environment and allows you to adapt and adjust. And ultimately the goal obviously is to be able to rebound from the recession and put ourselves on a course where we can be stronger than ever. I hope this information has been helpful and you'll be able to use it to the benefit of your association. Of course, .org source is here to support you. We can work with you on supporting your remote workforce, moving your meetings online, creating scenario plans, marketing during recessionary times, and other ways of improving your operations. We have a team of consultants that are here to serve you, and we're at the ready to do anything that we can for you during the COVID crisis. If you'd like more information on how .org source can help you manage through the COVID crisis and come out on the other side more successful than before, please contact our CEO, Sherry Budziak, at 847-275-1840. Thank you.